There's something special about R2-D2, isn't there? He looks more like a household appliance than anything, but a combination of deft puppetry, sound design, and his interplay with C-3PO allow us to identify him as a fully realized character right from the first moments we saw him on screen. As a kid, I dreamed about having a robot of my own, but of course that seemed impossible at the time. I heard about the R2-D2 Builders Club a number of years ago. It's a loose-knit group of people who enjoy building their own life-sized R2-D2 props, many of which are as good or better than those used on screen. I joined their forums many years ago in the hopes of building my own droid. I have a huge amount of respect for what they do, but after reading everything that goes into it in terms of time, skill, and money, I was forced to conclude that I probably wasn't up to the task. Fast forward seven or eight years, I had bought a 3D printer and discovered to my amazement that someone on Thingiverse was publishing a design for a full-sized 3D printed R2 unit. I may not be a very handy person, but I do know a thing or two about 3D printing now, as well as things like model painting and assembling. I thought maybe this would finally be my chance to make a life-size droid of my own. I decided I would try printing and finishing the dome. If that worked out, I could move on to the body. I'm going to show you how I made this, but it's not really a tutorial. I'm no expert, and I also won't be showing the entire process, but hopefully you'll get a good idea of what is required. The dome is made up of a lot of parts, as you can see here. There are two rings on the bottom, each made up of six pieces. On top of that is the main part of the dome, with nine sections at the base, and six sections on top of that. And finally, there is the top, which is made up of two sections. And of course, there are about 25 panels and other pieces that are attached to the outside of the dome to give R2 his distinctive appearance. 3D printers work by laying down layer after layer of plastic, which tends to give the parts a bumpy surface texture. Plus, there would be cracks where each section joined together. I wasn't sure if I would be able to make this into a smooth-looking dome. But I decided to try sanding. At first I did it by hand, with a sanding block like this. By the way, this is a scrap of carpet in my basement. I wouldn't recommend doing this on a good carpet. Then I remembered that electric sanders existed, and I bought a cheap one. This made things a lot easier. Some of the smaller parts still had to be finished by hand, but the electric sander sped up the process considerably. I was pretty impressed by how smooth the parts got with some sanding. With enough work, you can get them completely smooth. I should probably say a word about filament here. I used PLA filament, which is made from organic materials like cornstarch and sugarcane. The other most popular kind of filament is ABS, which is made from petroleum. It's stronger but harder to work with than PLA, but it has one advantage in that you can weld pieces of it together using acetone. That doesn't work with PLA, so I had to use glue instead. I used 5-minute epoxy glue for maximum strength and clamped the pieces together while they cured. I was worried that it might not be very strong, but the combination of the epoxy and the strength of the dome shape itself actually made this very sturdy. I started out using these little plunger packs of glue, but after going through several of them I wised up and got an economy size pack from a home improvement store. It costs three times as much as one plunger pack, but you get ten times as much glue. After the glue was dry, I sanded down the dome again to make sure all the surfaces were flush with each other. Several of the parts had warped pretty badly at the ends during the printing process, and this resulted in gaps that you can see here. To fix this, I used Bondo Body Filler. I covered the big gaps and all of the smaller cracks and imperfections on the dome. And once the Bondo was dry, I sanded it smooth. Then I primed the dome using a filler primer, which is supposed to fill in some of the little imperfections on the surface. I can't say it turned out completely perfect, but it's pretty impressive how seamless it looks. After the primer had dried, I lightly sanded the surface to smooth it out, and applied a base coat of black paint. I'm not entirely sure this was necessary, but in my experience, using a black base coat can really help metallic paints like silver look their best. After that, I sprayed the dome silver, while there are some paints that look very much like real metal, as soon as you put anything on top of them, like a clear coat or weathering, or even touch them very much, they turn dull. Instead, I tried this kind of silver, which said that it could take a clear coat. It was at this point that someone walking by noticed what I was doing. Are you making an R2D? Oh, I am. That's awesome! <laughs> yes. I almost want to make oh this now. What is this awesome. for? Oh, for my own pleasure, basically. <laughs> That's awesome! Thank you, random passerby. Next, I put on a clear coat. This helps protect the paint, but also makes it more glossy. 
after it dried, it looked kind of like a glossy silver car. It didn't look bad at all, but it wasn't quite what I was going for, so I decided to add some silver leaf rub and buff. This is a kind of wax with aluminum powder in it, and it does a remarkable job of making things look metallic. I assembled the bottom rings next, but found that they weren't even close to being flush with each other. Warping had struck again. After I glued them together, I ended up filling the crack with Bondo, and then making an artificial groove between them, so that they still look like separate pieces. They still aren't quite as uniform as I would like, but it's not really noticeable. Here are some, but definitely not all, of the external panels and other pieces that are attached to the dome. Each one of them had to be sanded and prepped for painting. And here's a quick test fit. It's starting to look like R2! Surprisingly, painting the blue pieces was one of the hardest parts of the process. Finding the right shade of blue was tricky, first of all. I ended up stripping the paint off of several test pieces three times before I finally went with Duplicolor Sonic Blue Pearl, which is a paint you can find at auto parts stores. It was also surprisingly difficult to apply it perfectly without applying too much or too little. Parts like this radar eye were particularly difficult due to their complexity. Unfortunately, I neglected to take any footage of the final assembly process, but it mostly just involved gluing the various pieces in place. And here is the finished dome. Honestly, I'm amazed it turned out this well. There may be a few blemishes here and there, but it really looks like R2-D2. I'll definitely be making the rest of him now, although I have no idea how long that will take. In case you're wondering, this took around a month to create in my spare time. I think it took between 3 and 4 1 kilogram spools of filament, which means it cost under $100 for the raw materials, and probably closer to 75 However, I did have to buy a lot of paint, glue, and sanding equipment, so that did contribute to the price. Literally everything on this dome is 3D printed, including the eye and the lens in the holo projector, which I 3D modeled myself. The model didn't include anything to go in the holo projectors, presumably because many people want to incorporate lights there. But I have no skill in electronics, and frankly have little interest in adding lights, since this is just going to be a static statue. That's why I also modeled some fake LED panels that I could paint and put in the logic displays on the front and back of the dome. I think they look quite good, actually, and I was kind of impressed with myself for being able to put my limited 3D modeling skills to use. Here's a close-up of the panel I made for the back of the dome. For his processor state indicator, which is this thing in the middle here, I just used a disc printed in transparent filament, with another disc printed in red and placed behind it and slightly to the side. I think it's kind of a cool effect since this light changes colors from time to time. I also used a disc of transparent filament in the back. I hope you enjoyed this project. I'll be making more videos when I make progress on R2's body, but it might be a while. Until then, thanks very much for watching.